Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for being a part of this tonight. Hello. Good evening from Nigeria. Oh, I've missed you all. Thank you so very much for being my guest tonight. I appreciate all of you. I'm sure you're all doing well. I do pray for you. And I know that this year will end for all of us on the note of celebrations. God bless you. God bless you all. If you are in Nigeria, or particularly if you live around Undo State or Shungun, it's my honor to invite you to our church convention. It starts next week, Sunday. It's going to be an awesome time. We're looking at the theme, the amazing God. The amazing God. There's no one as amazing as our God. You want to be a part of His. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Incidentally, I finished my exams today. Thank you. So those of you that checked on me, I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Yes, so finished my exam today. So part two, gone. Moving to part three. Glory to God. Thank you for everything. If you live in Ondo State or you live around Ondo State, you want to come to the Agape International Convention. My husband and I will be hosting this convention in a great way. The amazing God. Please tell someone to tell someone to tell someone. It's going to be amazing, amazing. Thank you. The exam was very good. I trust God for a great results yes i'm going to make all of you proud thank you thank you for your love thank you everyone i truly appreciate you i always take my time to read these comments they mean a lot to me thank you for everything thank you my opening remark tonight is um i'm a woman of faith i'm a christian so the bible rules my life genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 the Bible says, while the earth remains, seed, time, harvest shall not cease. I want to encourage you tonight to please make sure you do not sow what you don't want to reap. Don't sow what you don't want to reap. Life is governed by principles. And one of the greatest principles of life is the principle of sowing and reaping. If you don't want to reap it, do not sow it. Stop tearing people into shreds and pieces. Stop disrupting the peace of families and marriages. Stop sleeping around with a man that you know is married, even with any man, if you're not married to him. Stop using your tongue against people. Stop saying what you don't want to reap. Life is governed by principles. You don't want to repeat, do not sow it. The fact that you don't understand something does not mean that that person is wrong. To his master, he stands or he falls. Stop disrupting the peace in people's lives. If you don't have any good thing to contribute, please, wakapas, please go. Please leave them in peace. When you want to sow something in words, in action, in conduct, in whatever, ask yourself, when the harvest comes, <laughs> is this what I will want? You break another person's home. 100 people are waiting to break your own. You disrupt another person's peace. You speak ill about another person. You do all sorts of negative things to people. Just know that when we sow something, it's a fact of life and it's a principle. You don't owe, reap. You don't just reap what you sow in quantity and in quality. You reap more than eat. More. So, that thing you want to say to that person is a seed. 
attention, love, money, whatever. Everything you do is a seed. You will reap it in abundance and abundance. That's what we call the law of repercussion. The law of consequences. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. This is my opening remarks tonight. And please, I ask that you show love to people. Sometimes people are funny. They're not doing good to you. It doesn't matter. What they sow is what they will reap. What you sow is what you will reap. Don't allow anybody change you. Continue to be a good person. And you will repeat. Welcome again from everywhere. I see you. Kenya, Sweden. Thank you. Thank you. Ghana. Thank you. I love you too. I'm loving all of you right back. Thank you so very much. And tonight I have a Colossus as my guest. She's my personal financial advisor. This lady is good. Recently, she was a speaker at the uh, Mrs. Blair, Mrs. Tony Blair's conference, you know, USA, I see you uh, in England. And she's such a pride. She knows what she's doing. Oh, thank you. Kisses, kisses to all of you too. I received the kisses. Canada, everywhere. I just know that I'm not ignoring you. I appreciate all of you. This woman is, mm -mm. this lady is something else. And tonight, I intentionally, I'm intentionally bringing her so that she can talk to us about And they are wondering, I give, I do this, I do that, but what's going on? Wisdom is the principal thing. Shola Deshaki is my guest tonight. She's a financial expert. She's a chartered accountant. Oh, look at her. Very beautiful lady. <laughs> Island, I see you. All of you, I see you. Welcome, Mrs. Adeshaki, tonight. Such an honor to have you again. And thank you for always obliging me. Every time I feel that, we need to talk about money. You know, actually going, looking at what is going on in the world today. We need the wisdom that God has put on your inside. Thank you. Thank, thank you and you, welcome. Mama. Thank you for having me tonight, Pam. Thank you. Thank you so very much. It's a global tribe, like you know. You see them from everywhere, everywhere. Abuja, Sweden, Ghana. They are everybody. England, you know, America. They are, they are all, we are all here to listen to the wisdom that... Yes, you can follow her on Instagram. Shola underscore Adeshake. Yes, you can follow her. I'm going to pin that, you know, once I bring her up. I'm going to yield the floor to you. Please tell us, as you always do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Mama. I feel really, really honored and privileged. And each time you tell me, Shola, let's talk about finances. I mean, I, I have this overwhelming feeling of gratitude uh, and privilege and honor. I just, I just do not take it for granted by any means. So thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, thank you for being a working role model. Thank you for showing us what is possible. Thank you for nurturing us. I mean, we are products of um, your efforts. I, I have been following you for over a decade from afar until God gave me the opportunity to come closer. And you have literally given me room to fly. All of the things that, that I do today, uh, you foresaw them and you foresaid them, if there's any word like that. <laughs> so I really, really, really appreciate Ma. And uh, I'm just grateful. Um, it gives me joy to be here today again. I, I love to talk about finance. I love to talk to people about how they can make, manage, and multiply their money. And each time I have the opportunity, I, I do it passionately because, um, you know, you, you would permit me to go a bit religious on you tonight because I would, you know, take examples from the scriptures. The Bible says that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. What does that mean? Light does not shine 
brightly or you do not see the brightness of the light until there is darkness. So if you turn on your lights at 4 p.m., you know, in your house, you may not really feel the effect of that light. You wait till 7 p.m. in Nigeria, you wait till 8 p.m., wait till 10 p.m., then your light continues to shine brighter and brighter. So how can we apply that to our lives? Now, the scripture, when it said, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter, what it means is that darkness may prevail. There may be a lot of darkness out there. But as Christians, as people of faith, as believers, in the midst of the ever-increasing darkness, our own light would shine brighter and brighter. Our finances will shine brighter and brighter. So when everybody is complaining about, hey, economy, oh, there's no money, oh, hey, this and that, oh, inflation and devaluation, it is not as if we don't, don't see those things. But in the midst of it all, we continue to make more money. We continue to manage more money. We continue to multiply our money. So my first admonition tonight is I need us to be less conscious literally about what the economy is saying because if you focus your attention on what the economy is saying i am aware this is a global community so when i say economy i am talking about the global economy because i mean everybody every country is literally groaning you go to the U people are complaining, you go to the US people are complaining, you go to Canada people are complaining, in Nigeria people are complaining. So, you know, whatever is happening in this global economy is not peculiar to just one country. It is everywhere. Those in the UK are saying the prices of products and services have gone up, those in Nigeria are saying the same thing, everywhere. But I, I want us to stay aware of these things but they must not become our predominant thoughts. Because if you allow the things happening out there to weigh you down, you will not be able to receive inspiration. You will not be able to give in your best at work. You will not be able to unleash your creative genius regarding your business. So these things are happening but we must learn to channel our energy into having constructive conversations rather than just complaining about what is not working, there is no this, there is no that. It could be overwhelming. Ma, these days, there is hardly any conversation that doesn't have to do with the economy. Ma, at home, amongst um, family members, between spouses, between friends, on WhatsApp groups, uh, old students, associates, everybody is talking about how difficult and how hard things are. Now, if we allow ourselves to immerse in those things, we will continue to complain. And we won't be able to see the opportunities out there. Now, there's a quotable quote, I can't remember exactly who said it, but it says that for some people, in the middle of opportunities, they see difficulties. But for some people, in the middle of difficulties, they see opportunities. It's an attitude thing. So again, if there is nothing, if there's one thing you will take out of this conversation, I need you to begin to rewire your mind, rewire your mindset, rewire your conversations, and just begin to think and talk and feel more positive. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it takes more energy and effort to worry. Okay. And <laughs> there's really nothing worry can do with what is happening, especially in Nigeria. Now, our president gave some speech, you know, I think it was yesterday. Things are happening. Worry cannot provide the necessary solution. Worrying cannot put money in your bank account. Money cannot, you know, make you go to sleep. And by the time you wake up, you have 
50 million in your account. No. We need clear minds. And I need you to type it in the comments. Clear minds. Clear minds. Clear conversations. Clear affiliations. Clear knowledge. And I hope that this night I will share things that would help your mind and push you to take action. And I'm hoping that we'll have an amazing night. Those who are familiar with me know that I, I love to play with words and I love to teach you with acronyms. And I have an acronym tonight and it is what I call GLEAN. GLEAN. G-L-E-A-N. GLEAN. So I am going to be sharing five key points. G-L-E-A-N. And I, I, I am trusting that they would blow your mind and propel you to take action. Now, if you look, you know, at the news, you watch the news, it seems like it is one bad news, one bad economic news after another. And I was just reading the world reporters of July, what economic reporters of July 25th, and it says that it is projected that, you know, global growth will fall or we deteriorate further this year into next year. So even the experts do not have a clue. They, they don't have an idea. So every man to himself, every man to the, the knowledge that you are able to accumulate and work with. Now let's go into my dream. And please, I am giving you advance notice. I am going to be quoting the Bible a lot tonight, right? Aha. Uh -huh. People of faith, have a clear mind. I am aware there are people who are not Christians here, but you will learn from this. Now, in such a hard economic season, what is my dream? What attitude and what approach should we have to what is happening around the world? You can guess. Take a guess. Anybody in the comments, take a guess. And just give me one second to turn on my ACA. <laughs> Who wants to take a guess? G, take a guess. Take a guess. Yeah, Augie okay, got it. Gratitude. Oh. Gratitude. Gratitude. Guys, in the Bible in Matthew 14, there was some chaotic situation. There was an economic situation, just like what we are seeing now. Now, the disciples of Jesus came to meet him and they said, you know what? Hey, sir, there's a lot of crowd out there. They have been following us all day. We need to feed them. Even if we spend the whole wages and everything, it cannot feed these people. They were agitated. Just like some of us find ourselves becoming more agitated. Ma, on a weekly basis before now, I would fill my tank with maybe 12, 13,000 per week. Conveniently, ma, my <laughs> car drinks 29,000, 30,000 li liters per week. Now, uh -huh. economic chaos. That was what they encountered when they said, oh, these people, we have to feed them, but we do not have anything. And Jesus was calm and he said, okay, well, calm down, calm down, calm down. What do we have around? I said, there's a guy who has some, you know, five loaves and blah, 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 blah. And the guy came around. And Jesus just took those things. And the first thing that he did was to give thanks. Now, I think you have said it many times. What you are not grateful for cannot multiply. So some of us, we do not realize this. We do not realize that life is governed by principles. Now, I am not here to teach you some funny theory or whatever, but everything on earth as is, everything, the plants, everything. So when all around your house, all you keep saying is, there is no money, we are doomed. There is da 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 da. You know what? You continue to replicate those things that you say, and they are the things that you will continue to see. The scripture is so profound. It says that, look at the flowers of the field. 
Ma, I have a small flower garden at home. And there's this particular, particular plant. I, I, I noticed that in the morning, you know, it looks a bit dull. I'm like, well, yesterday I saw flowers on this thing. What's happening today? I, I, and then I started to study it. So I called my gardener one day and I said, this flower, what's the name? And he said, the name is Morning Glory. And how does this flower work? By 9, 10 o'clock, the flower comes out in full bloom. White, purple, yellow, ma. By 2 o'clock, once the sun comes out, all the flowers fall. Mm. And then it looks like they go to sleep. When next morning, without fail, the flowers bloom again. By 2 o'clock, they are all gone on the floor. Now, the Bible says that the flowers of the field, you, 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 you have no idea. But every day they wake up, they look beautiful. They have been taken care of by God. How much more we who have been created in his image. Now, that is the attitude to adopt regarding your finances. Whether you have a lot, whether you have little, whether you have big, whether you have small, be grateful. Gratitude opens you up to more opportunities. And by the way, these principles I am sharing, glean, are things that I have personally practiced. So I am sharing from the Bible and I am sharing from my experiences. A lot of us complain too much. Let me tell you, experts have said that everything that we see in the global economy, things are not likely to get better <laughs> this year. Let's not, let's not deceive ourselves. So the better, the, I mean, the earlier we armed ourselves with the right principles and things to do, the better. Gratitude will take you far. You know, I was saying it earlier on that sometimes you worry. It takes a lot more to worry. You're worrying about, yes, the, I mean, it is obvious. Everybody is feeling the brunt, the brunt of the whole thing. But some people are managing it better than others. Some people, the fear is palpable. And when you look at them, they still have things going on for them. But you see people who do not even have anything still exhibiting gratitude for what they have. So my first point tonight is, yeah, the economy is this and that. But let us approach these things with a heart of gratitude, which is what Jesus modeled. The Bible said Jesus himself knew that five loaves of bread and two fish could never even in my family of uh, how many? We eat bread a lot in my house. Five loaves cannot get... <laughs> my last son can finish two loaves. Fresh agege bread, big ones. How much more? 5,000 people. <laughs> how, how come? How? Look, Jesus himself knew. But the Bible said he took those things in his hands and he gave things. Yes, somebody said what you appreciate, appreciate, absolutely. So my, my first admo admonition, people of God and you know, people watching from all over the world, let us learn to be gratitude in the midst of everything happening. Thank you, Lord, for meeting my bills, the ones that will come, the ones that are past. Just, just have a grateful heart. It works a lot. It keeps your heart at peace. How many of you, you know, you're just grateful and then you see that some of the things you're worried about just somehow you, you couldn't even explain. They just got sorted. There is a reason to be worried every single day. Let me tell you, everybody has a reason to be worried. Everybody, absolutely, all around the world, even the president, uh, the vice president, the richest, Elon Musk, with all his money. <laughs> Man, I, I'm wondering how he's coping. There's always a reason uh, 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 to be worried. You are agitated, you are apprehensive, you don't know if your plans will work out, you don't even know how your children will turn out, you don't know where the money for you know the next bill is going to come from. 
But let, let us learn to be grateful. Let us learn to be grateful. Are we good with that? Now, let's go on to point two. Remember, we are talking about glean, and I have talked about gratitude. The second thing is what I call lean inwards. Look inwards. The key to your financial breakthrough starts from you. I, I don't know who made this quote that said, what you are looking for abroad. Oh, no, 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 is that Yoruba, whatever that says? The thing you are looking for in Shokoto is in your Shokoto. For those who don't understand that, Shokoto or Sokoto is a, a, a state in Nigeria. But in the Yoruba language, Shokoto means your, um, your, your father. Sometimes the things you are running around looking for, you want to go to Sokoto to go and buy something, but it is right there with you. The key to your financial prosperity and to your financial breakthrough starts from you. It is not external, guys. Sometimes it is a simple mindset shift. Sometimes it is you picking up a talent, picking up a gift that you have abandoned. In one of the courses that we teach at Smart Stewards, it is called Digitalize Your Diamond. One of the models, I, and the things that, you know, I taught a particular module on how to identify your diamonds. And from some research that I did, one professor, I think, in the University of Pennsylvania, I can't remember where, said, every man, every man has four different diamond pillars. He says, some of us, our childhood competencies, the things that we knew how to do when we were younger, that people will say, ah, for example, when I was younger, I used to dance a lot at parties, ma. It's now I don't know how to dance again. There was no party we went to that I would not come home with a gift. Best dancer. It was a childhood competence. But along the line, I wasn't dancing again. I joined the choir. But because of the many things that have happened, I have left my singing, you know, gift and all of that. He says childhood competencies. He said another pillar of our diamond is our experiences. Some of us, we have experiences that we can monetize. And we're just sitting on them. Let me tell you, I started Smart Stewards from a place of experience. If you do not know my story, I've said it many times. I qualified as a chartered accountant about 22 or 23 years ago. But for a better part of my career, I was clueless about my finances. I was that chartered accountant with scattered accounts. My money was, was everywhere. I was any so well, but less than, you know, Five days into salary, I was broke. And then I went through some really, really hard, hard patch in my life. When I came out of it, I started smart students. I am here today because of my experience. And there are a lot of people who have gone through. Now, not everybody would monetize their experience. Don't get me wrong. But I am saying that it could form a major part of the diamonds that you're sitting on. Don't forget, I am saying leaning, lean inward, right? Look inwards, because sometimes there's the key to your final. We're still going to break this down, but let me let, let me let me try and continue. So two diamonds. Number three diamonds. He said your competency, the things that you have gone to school to learn. So I studied accounting. I am also a certified financial educator, education instructor. With my accounting, I can get a job. I have a job. I consult. I make money from it. As a personal finance coach, certified, I make money from it as well. Then he said the fourth set of diamond is what you call your same skills, SAME skills, your social skills, your action skills, your mental skills, and your emotional skills. It's a lot, but let me, let me not digress. I'm just trying to tell you that what you want, the key to your next levels is within you. No, no government is able to save you. Guys, listen. 
They are there to direct you. Your friends are there to direct you. The finance coach, your coaches are there to direct you. But your breakthrough starts from you. You have got to say, okay, I am ready to become more serious in my finances. I'm ready to make more money. I'm ready to make a better thing out of my life or out of my situation. So live in what? And if you look at the Bible, the story of the five loaves and two fish that I said, they could have gone into town to go and buy five bread, five loaves of bread and two fish. But the solution was right there with it. The five loaves were there. The, the two fish were there, living ones. How many of you remember the story of the widow whose husband had died and didn't leave money and had debts and they were coming, they were going to come to take her two sons. How many of you? Second Kings chapter 4. When she encountered the prophet, the first thing he asked her was, what do you have in your house? And the woman said, I do not have anything except for a jar of oil. Ladies and gentlemen, it was that same small jar of oil that saved her. When Peter had toiled all night and then Jesus appeared on the, on the scene, it's like we have toiled all night. We don't even know what to do. Did Jesus tell them to change their fishing rod or the fishing net? No, it was the same fishing net. It was the same fishing, fishing rod that they used. Lean inwards, look inwards. Many of us are looking for validation outside. We are looking for influencers to help our businesses. We are looking for this person, this advisor, this advisory, this whatever. And we are literally living on the table the gifts and talents that we have ourselves. Lean inwards. Yeah, somebody says, Lord, show me the small things that I have. Absolutely. I pray it all the time. Some of us because of lack of gratitude, because we keep comparing ourselves with others, we have lost track and we have lost touch even with ourselves. Our self-confidence and everything is battered. Come on. In the midst of this economy chaos, the key to your financial breakthrough is with you. And I'm going to explain it as I go on. But after after this call tonight, I need you to go home and start to list out the things that you can do or the things that you have done in the past. You know, some of us, we, we just move out of awareness zone because of the bad bows of life, the things happening. And you, you, you literally will forget that you could cook, you could bake, you literally will forget that you you learned some skills that made you money in the past. But because sometimes you're also always looking for the next good thing. What is happening? They call it the shiny object syndrome. Because everybody is doing this, I have to do it. Ah, actually, all my friends are now selling this thing. I have to sell as well. Oh, actually, all my friends are now doing influencer gigs. I have to do it. Actually, all my friends, they said it's one something, something, somewhere. Then we pivot immaturely. Or we leave the things that have been working for us. We leave them behind. And we move into things that are not necessarily our areas of strength. I need you to look in what today. Because some of us, we will remember some skills that used to make us money. We will rem remember some things. Ma, I said I will share practical things. A few years ago, I think I shared this when I came for the last uh, session. I, I, I consult for a company, you know, in VI, and I would pack my lunch. But lunch is meant to be eating around two or three. But around 11, I'd be hungry, and then I would say, come and buy me stuff. And we say, man, we have to go to this side of Victoria Island, and then we'll take um, transport. Transport to go to that place was like maybe 700. Then I would say, so how much is the snack that I'm buying? On my way home one day, I just stumbled on a bakery not too far from my house. It was a Thursday evening. I can't forget. 
Then I went into that place and I said, you know what? Tomorrow on my way to work, I'm going to come and pick some, some items to resell. Are you going to give me a discount? They said, yes, 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 come. So my way to work on that Friday morning, I went there, got some of those items, took them to work. When I got to work, I gave it to our office assistant. Don't forget, I was a consultant. I'm still a consultant there. Don't go and say, it was one coach that said I should go and be selling snacks or so that they will snack, I mean, uh, sack you. Uh -huh. So I gave it to the lady and I said, okay, yeah, these are stuff to sell. Ma, in less than one hour, she came back. She had sold out. People had been looking for somebody to fill that gap. So on my way home, I just went straight to the snack shop and I said, you know what? I'm not even reselling. I want to learn how to make it. Mm. And the lady said, okay, tomorrow is Saturday, ma. I'll come to your, you know. I gave her money. She bought things. The whole of Saturday, I was learning how to make donuts, egg roll, scotch egg. Ma, that was how I became a chartered donut maker. A chartered <laughs> egg roll maker. In addition to my being a chartered accountant. And I started a business. I, you know, at some point, I could have blown it into a conglomerate, but... I mean, it wasn't my line of... Now, if I need money desperately today, ma, that's a gift I can easily call on. Because the gift is still with me. So, why did I share that example? Some of us, we have done some things in the past, acquired some skills in the past that we have forgotten. As I'm talking, I, I just, you know, I'm just remembering a couple of other skills that I have learned such that even if I am not doing this coaching or can't hear anything again, ma, I cannot be hungry and I'm not bragging. And that leads me to the next point. Don't forget we are talking about glean. Gratitude, looking words, leaning words. E, expand your sources of income. Let me tell you, I am not a finance coach that will tell you not to spend money. No way. Because spending is sacrosanct in this life. <laughs> I would have said only the dead don't spend money. But these days, man, even the dead people spend money. <laughs> when a person dies, yeah, they will pay for mortuary. They will pay. I don't see dead people that debtors are still chasing their children all around. The children are paying it for them. So that people sometimes spend money. Spending is sacrosanct. What I teach is spend smartly. So when we say, when people say cut down your expenses, to what extent? What are the expenses you want to cut down on? Is it your landlord in Nigeria? Will your landlord reduce the rent? Have you ever seen any landlord agree reducing rent in Nigeria? You have four children who have been going to the same school. First one, second one, third one. The school will not say, ah, this fourth one, let us give you discount on them. No way. Mortgage. They will say, ah, no, you have paid your mortgage to 22 years. The remaining nine, nine or ten, eight years, don't pay again. No. Spending is sacrosanct. What we say is spend smartly. Spend wisely, guys. Our Ever, it is easier to even make more money than to say you are shrinking your expenses. Yes, I know that you must have heard so many, you know, presentations, sermons about, ah, in this economic season, you have to be careful, you have to squeeze yourself. Ma, <laughs> the prices of goods and services have increased. How can you shrink? So, if the prices of things weren't going up, it's a different thing. Now that in Nigeria, a liter of petrol has gone from 185, I don't even know how much now, Nisha. I say I know that we bought fuel on Saturday. It was a driver that, I, I don't know, whether I seek something, I live in gratitude, I don't allow those things to wear me down. I pray, Father, thank you for provision. Provision comes, we move. But what am I saying? In an economy where prices of good and services have gone up. How are you able to shrink your expenses? How? You're 
children will not thank you six seventeen per liter mm. your children won't wake up and say mommy and daddy we see how you have been laboring we will not go on green the next three days and mm. lie lie so rather than always saying cut your expenses down shrink your expenses how about expand your source expand your resources yes if it says a mortgage in the uk has doubled within 12 months fact mm. how can we expand i have just shared with you how you can look inwards and then bring your talent to the table ma many years ago i went to learn how to do liquid soap I know how to do liquid soap. I can monetize it. I can commercialize it. I am not just doing it because I don't have to do it. But ma, in the last four years, the liquid, four, six, seven years, the liquid soap I have used in my house, or we have used in my, I've been making it. I still made eligible before I traveled. You know what? That, that, that's it. And it is top notch, ma. The smell, the glossiness, the glassiness, the quality. I don't even know why I'm not selling it, but that can be everywhere. What I'm saying is you must always introspect and look out for how you can expand your resources. Because God and the Bible are about the principle of multiplication and if you look at the three examples i have shared the five loaves and the two fish had to necessarily be multiplied had to necessarily be multiplied the woman with the the jar of oil can you remember that story? Read it later, Second Kings chapter 4. When she took her jar of oil, the prophet said, shut yourself in with your children. And what happened? They started to pour from the little jar into bigger jars because there necessarily must be multiplication. When Peter um, threw his, his, his fishing rod and everything into the net, the Bible said that they caught fish such that the net started to tear. There must be multiplication because if there is no multiplication of your resources and your expansion, you will finish everything that you have. And that's why we have to take a cue from farmers. When farmers harvest, they eat some, they give out some, they, they sell some, and they replant some. Multiplication of resources is what makes the world go round. If, if you are too comfortable with what you have, say, ah, no, bleh, jack of all trade, master of none. Ah, no, it is for a season. If, huh. you know, if Jack Steph doesn't have to be master of all, there's no need to be master of all. Master one, no other. Now, I'm not saying go on your Instagram page. Today you are selling Gary. Tomorrow you are selling Bone Street. Next tomorrow you are selling CD. Be known for something, but have other things that can bring you money. Now, let us look at the richest man in the world. You see Elon Musk from Tesla, he's doing space, from space, he's doing... Do, do you think those guys are just doing those things for the fun of it? You see Mark Zuckerberg going, for, just trying to hook us down from Facebook to Instagram, Instagram to WhatsApp, WhatsApp to Thread. Why? They need those, they need your money. There is nothing such as once a millionaire, forever a millionaire. Go and look at some people in the past who had money, who do not have money again. How many of you remember Rashidi Yekini of Blessed Memory? He was the one that scored the first goal for us in 
the, uh, the in the World Cup in 1994. I followed that story very well back then. I followed it. Rashidi Yakini died of depression at Ibadan. When you lose money, you lose friends. Mm. But you don't have the likes of Okocha, Olise, still in the news. Is it because they are fine or they speak better English? No. People we can to associate with people that have money. So if, if you think you have one million naira today and you live in Nigeria, ah, the forces against your money are a lot more than you know. The force of inflation, the force of devaluation. Four years ago, Ma, at Smart Stewards, the community where I lead, you should follow Smart Stewards on Instagram too. I did a challenge. I said, everybody, let us save up 360,000 Naira on Piggy Vest between September and December. Once you finish saving it up, by January of the next year, we will start our dollar mutual fund. Because back then, 360,000 Naira would buy $1,000. A lot of people jumped on it. People saved their $1,000. Some people saved $50,000. Some people saved $20,000. Till tomorrow, people still thank me. Those who bought dollars at 360 Naira then and put it in the dollar mutual fund, the money is still there. Because if you don't hedge against devaluation and all of these things, they will make a mess of your finances. I remember two years ago, or I think it was early last year, Dangote came out to say he was opening the branch or whatever of you know the Dangote Group in New York to hedge against currency risks. So you cannot. I'm sorry. Let me not say you cannot. You should not be comfortable with just one source of income. As a salary earner, anything can happen. Ask 2020 when COVID happened. As a business owner, anything can happen. You do not have control. See, there are a lot of things that we do not have control over in this world when it comes to finances. Now, May 29, 2023, our new president was sworn in. We slept with petrol at 185 per liter, highly subsidized. We woke up on the 29th of May to hear that subsidy had been removed. Did we plan for it? I remember that day, I was meant to fill my tank. I was like, no, I was fully. As soon as, mm. as I heard the news, ma, blue, blue, car, blue, blue, son, enter. We went to the filling station. Ma, immediately, those ones said they were not selling again. I had to go to another filling station. The frenzy was crazy. We don't have control over some things. You don't have control over emergencies in life. You don't have control over when your children will develop a fever and they say you have to go to the hospital. You don't have control over a lot of things. But the things that you have control over, you must take them seriously. And they include how can I expand my resources? How can I multiply my resources? Ma, you opened FFA Resort. Was it three years ago? Diversification. Not too long at that, ma. You did FFA fragrances. Diversification. Not too long after that, ma. You did FFA apparels. Diversification. Ma. Not too long after that, you told us you are back in school to read law. Even though it might be out of passion for impact and influence. Ma, by the time you become a lawyer, all of us will come and consult with you. We will, we, will, we, will, we will appoint you or consult with you as our lawyer. It will bring money. Diversification. For some of us, we are still very young. Gen Z. They say, no, 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 no. Tomorrow will take care of itself. The times we are supposed to use to learn new skills. And you're saying, yeah, well, well, yeah, the things are happening. Well, we'll be fine. Ma, answer. Except you do something, you will not be fine. Because you don't have control over everything. You must protect your future. 
you must protect the future of your children. Yesterday, ma, pound sterling. Huh. I was going to help somebody buy. They said pound sterling is 1,195 naira. Huh. If somebody told me, me that in my lifetime, pound sterling, ma, this pound sterling, in fact, I bought dollar, dollar, at less than 100 naira. I'm sure you must have bought dollars at one naira, two naira back in those days. And look at it. Do we even know if this is going to stop anytime soon? Now, let's not dwell over the things that we do not have control over. Let us focus on the things that we have control over. Let us maximize our time. Let us look at how we will rather than complaining 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 and being in the gathering of complainers how can we improve expand increase our resources i've told you a few things that i have learned there are many other, ma i can design websites i have used websites to make money in this my life huh. I, I have managed social media pages for people i have made money with I have done liquid soap. I have sold snacks. What what have I not even done? Ah, I deserve flowers, man. Now, these days, I have learned over time to consolidate. But it doesn't, and there are things that I, I do now that I may not want to, I don't want to share, but I'm saying that protect yourself. There's nothing such as a shame money. I am ashamed. Ashamed of what? Money? Huh. Money? These days, if anybody gives me 5,000, I will thank you the way the person who gives me 5 million. I will thank you like that. If you give me 5,000 today, I will thank you the way I will thank the person who gives me 5 million. Because money is money. And I usually huh. like to joke. And I, I would say, if a guy takes a girl to, to a restaurant and you know what? He has said, wound me take anything you want and the girl wounds you takes eats everything and they bring the bill and your bank balance is, is less by 10 naira or even 20 naira if you present your card you already know it is transaction declined but if you go into the bathroom and you call your friend and say send me 100 naira now 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 if the person sends you 100 naira will it not save the day so why do we say they want money is small? It credits are large, no matter how small, would move your account forward than a debit a lot. Somebody says the dignity in labor. Absolutely. Ma, if I continue on this point, I won't finish it tomorrow. We have talked about gratitude, we have talked about leaning inwards, we have talked about um expanding your resources the next thing a avoid wastage avoid wastages guys this one this one i can sleep on it in the midst of it there's no economy whatever things that Ladies especially, we are still buying things that we are not supposed to buy, things that we do not need. Some of us need to declutter and sell some things. Part of your money is in your wardrobe, the money that you need. Some of us, yeah, I'm not saying don't give you, because they say, is it everything you will sell? Every man for himself. But there are things that you can literally pack out, because you you bought them, you never needed them. These days, I like people who, you know, when they do a party, they tell you, we're not taking a shabby, but the color is raspberry. The <clears throat> color is whatever. Wear what you have. Ma, and I've decided, I will do a lot of kimonos in different colors. Call me for your party. I will come. Except for me, my closest friends that, ah, <laughs> when these ones get married, oh, no, I will buy their shabby. But aside that, ma, I have kimonos and I'm making them in different colors. Just knock them. There's no shame. You didn't buy a shabby. Ah, I didn't buy. I'd rather give you a gift. Avoid wastage. Declutter. You can't just be spending money because the money is there. 
we went for an event, you know, two weeks ago in the UK, and my team member said, ah, coach, hmm, these people that are here, you won't know they have money. It's their rich watches you will use to know. Because they don't flaunt anything. They don't flaunt it. You don't know. But we, we want to, I'm not saying don't live an amazing life. Don't get me wrong. Remember, we are talking about five factors. And I'm saying, right now, avoid wastages. You can fly premium economy instead of business class. Ah, why not? Jump on it. You can fly economy and buy the front seat, exit seat. Come on, jump on it. Money not spent is money earned. It remains with you. Avoid wastage. The three examples that I quoted from the Bible, when Jesus multiplied the five loaves of bread and the two fish, they had how many baskets? They could have left it. Come on. JB was free food now. JB was supernatural. They packed every single thing and even counted the numbers of baskets. Profound. The lady with the oil, hey, she kept pouring. Rather than allow the oil waste, she borrowed containers from her neighbors. Okay? No wastage. Ah, she was free. It wasn't a miracle oil, miracle food. Even Peter. The Bible said when he caught fish, the fish, the net was tearing. He could have left it to be tearing and for the fish to be enjoying. But he had to beg on on his friends to say, come on and help us. Because that it is miraculous does not mean you should subject it to waste. Some of us, we are not feeling the, 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 the things happening in the economy because your husband is the one buying stuff for you. Your father is the one buying stuff. Your mother is the one buying stuff. It just it really doesn't matter. No, go out there and see what is happening. Let us avoid wastage. I'm not, I'm not saying don't flaunt anything, but hey, why waste food? Some of us go to parties. We serve ourselves at buffet tables and we take things that we cannot finish. I cannot, for my, sometimes I'm guilty. I'm guilty, but well, it is wrong. <laughs> Even if it is a buffet and the food must finish, do you have to be the one to help them waste? Make provision for the people working in the hotel or restaurant. If the food doesn't fit, they can take it home. Then we mount this on that, mount this on that, then we leave it on the table. Mm. Then you call, you call the waiters to come and pack it. <laughs> in Yoruba, they say that it is what you do at home, you will exhibit it. And we are, we are not, our children too, we are passing it on to them. They open something, they don't like it, they dump it, they open another, they dump it. Man, sir, it's not, not a cost, but God is very mindful of prudent resources. And that was why when Noah was going to build the ark, gave him the dimensions. Moses gave him the dimensions. This is how to do it. I've got two minutes more. Let me say the final point. N. N. Networking and collaboration. Guys, we have been talking about gleam, gratitude. Can you remember? Leaning inwards and looking inwards expanding your resources, avoiding waste or wastage. And the last one, I love those three stories I have shared because all these five things can be seen in them. And I'll take you back. Mm. When Jesus multiplied the five fish, or the five loaves and the two fish, they needed people to pack, to serve. He broke it gave it to his, to his disciples. First of all, he told them, all of you sit down in 50s or whatever. He needed people. He couldn't have done it alone, even though he had superpowers. He needed people to, to help execute the, the distribution. He needed people to pack after they had eaten. The miracle of the oil. The lady needed to borrow jars and drums from her neighbors. What if they did not give her? 
in the miracle of the fish, Peter, the fishermen, they had to back on on their friends and fellow fishermen to help them with their nets, to help them carry those things in. For us to thrive in this global economic state, ma, we need people who cooperative. People that we can do businesses with. Now, this is not a time where you will say, I want to get all I can and I can all I get. Do you know what that means? Mm. Get, get all you can. Then you can block it all you get. No way. We, we must find a means of being a blessing to others. Find a means of collaborating with others. Find a means of seeking for help. Find a means of discussing with our friends. What can we do? I tell people that gone are those days when, where and when, as ladies, the only thing we are talking about is the latest bag. No, we have signed out of that school. These days, we are talking about what business? What real estate investment? What can we do? Even as spouses, last week I was telling my husband, darling, ah, this 2023, let's combine forces. What are we doing together? Those are the conversations we must have. Because God is about individual wealth, collective wealth, generational wealth. I shared that at the Winning Edge earlier in January. Uh, yes, earlier in January. January. Individual wealth, collective wealth, generational wealth. In our WhatsApp groups, I'm not saying don't talk about the economy. As you are talking about the economy, be talking about what you can do together. Now, I'm not saying you should do stuff with every Tom, Dick, and Harry because some people are not trustworthy. We have done investments with people that we felt were trustworthy. It hasn't panned out well. We're in litigation. But there are people that, you know, you will be able to do business with by doing your due diligence. So, in our WhatsApp group, as we are talking about, Tinubu did this. Prime Minister this did that. Russia did that. Let us be throwing in suggestions. When we see resources that can bless our communities, let us share them. At Smart Stewards, ma, this August, today is August 1st. What a, what a great day to be talking about these things. If you go on my page, my post of today, there's a challenge, 31-day challenge with simple daily tasks regarding your finances. And we have a Telegram group where you can join for free. Come and learn. Today, you're supposed to read a book, a free book, my free book, and you're supposed, I can't remember the task. But on my page and on Smastiwas page, it is there. The link to join the community is there. You need to be in the midst of people like my iron sharpens iron. The multitude of fools will be destroyed. Surround yourself with wise people. But aside from that, we have an academy where we teach courses, where we provide resources to help you as smart steward. Today, today as well, August 1st, ma, we started a boot camp for our children. We have children from maybe about 10 countries represented. I was at the life class. Our coaches were the ones who facilitated it. UK, Canada, US, about 40 children sitting behind the computer. It's one month long. As you are doing things for yourself, connect your children to. Connect your sisters. You get an information that will help them. Don't say, ah, they, they must not know. If you don't tell them, they will know else. They will find it out somehow. And they will, they, will, they will prosper, they will flourish. Ma, I hope that with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince us that Glean is the way to go in this current economy. Thank you for having me. Oh my God. What a gift of God. Shola. Thank you for being a generational blessing. I truly, truly appreciate you. you. She's my personal financial advisor and I have pinned 
have handle at shola underscore adisha king you don't want to miss this lady she should be in your life let her hold your hand and guide you go on her page go join the challenges she's been a blessing thank you so much for your labor of love you see i'm not surprised that god is opening doors wide doors for you you know two weeks ago we're both in england was it two weeks or three weeks where she was speaking yes she was speaking at a conference uh -uh, organized by mrs tony blair that was something else and these are the kind of doors that god opens for her we have her and she's here she's not charging us look at the wealth and the depth of knowledge go on her page be a part of what god is using this beautiful lady to do and come back to thank me once again thank you so much for glean gratitude lean inwards or look inwards expand your sources of income avoid wastages and network or collaborate thank you again and again and again thank you global family from hong kong you see i see them there somebody said i'm, I'm joining from hong kong people are thanking god for us and i'll bring her again and again you all know and i'm going to save this it'll be on my page my instagram page for 24 hours and i'll move it to youtube so you guys can continue to have it don't cry there is still hope for all of us thank, thank you thank, thank you again Shula. Thank you. god bless you I will. Thank you. good night everybody thank you